All right, Chimera Org folks, peoples, members. Uh, some of you have asked me to uh, go through some of the basic setup on the Org Factory as far as from the refining of the pures and how the links are set up. So this is what we've got and how we've set it up so far. Uh, because we have so many links that have to go to different things from, say, the pures, we have multiple boxes. So let's start all the way at the basics. Up on the front of the factory, you put in the ore. So when you put the ore in, there are transfer units which move products from one box to another box uh, in a specific room and they'll take that ore from this specific box and they'll move it to these containers back here. Each one of these is dedicated to a specific ore. All right. So what do we do with that? Well, we need to purify it first. All right. So we're going to run that into refiners. All of those boxes run back up to the front of the building to hubs so we can very easily and quickly monitor or if we have to uh, pull some out to make aluminum or whatever we need to do with it it's all in one place we don't have to keep running down to the back side of the factory finding the box linking so on and so forth it's all in one place on the wall i'll show you guys at the end of the video if i remember all right so those hubs then link to the appropriate refiners and we do them individually because you're limited to the amount of links that you can output as 10. Um, in no case at the moment have we gone over 10 links per hub on the output for uh, purification. Uh, this seems to be maintaining everything we need at the moment. Each one of these bays represents its own ore, its own purification process. So for tier ones, we don't uh, need a lot of this at a time. So what are we running here? Well, this is in this bay. What's this box? It's labeled, of course, pure silicone. If you've watched the other video I just did on industry, labeling everything is your friend. Start at the beginning. So why do we have two silicone boxes? Because we need more than 10 links for the silicone. So silicone one, carbon, uh, aluminum, and so on and so forth. So these transfer units here are attached to box one and they are set to move a set amount of that pure to box two, so then you have more links you can shoot everywhere around the factory. All right, so what are we looking at for box two? Okay, we're maintaining about 50,000 silicone in box two. All right, so as box two gets used, this automatically turns on and moves silicone here, which will then immediately turn on the refiners to fill this box back up. Now, these transfer units here um, all have different functions. They're each moving, as you can see from the label, sulfur, label right here, sulfur transfer from silver. So as a byproduct, when you um, purify a camphite, uh, which is pure silver, goes into pure silver, it also, also makes sulfur. If you don't transfer that byproduct out, it will clog up your system because I mean, you could link from the container to supply something that uses sulfur, but then if you're not producing or purifying enough silver for other things, you'll run out of sulfur. So you might as well have a dedicated sulfur refinement and simply take the byproduct out of the silver and stick it back into the main sulfur container. So that's what this particular one does and so on and so forth for all of these down below it, silicone transfers, uh, carbon consolidate and if you look at the links you can see that it pulls in all of the things that it needs to that's making carbon as a byproduct and shoots it out to the appropriate container or in this case silicon all right and you can see here as you move down so that's all that does now your tier ones off byproduct gases all right so hydrogen oxygen and anybody that runs any industry knows that those build up quickly and excessively. And if you don't take care of them, either by using them to make fuel, plastics, um, and various other things, uh, they'll bind up your system. All of a sudden, your machinery like that makes your screws and pipes and things like that stop working. And it's like, well, what's going on? You know, if you're running in an inventory tracking that doesn't specifically list the parts, it just gives you a total weight. Well, it looks like it's full problem is it's full of gases so what we've done here is we move all of the gases and it takes um, 
you can see all these transfer units. It takes more than one to do this. We move all of the gases into a gas collection bin. And that gas collection bin then actually offshoots to some extra collections depending on where they need to shoot and where they need to go. All right. You're going to use your gas for, again, your fuel, your polycarbonate, if you make warp cells, glass, things of that nature, whatever you use the gases for in your recipes schematics. All right, but it all consolidates in the one place. So to transfer units, in this case, when it sees 100 liters of gas, it will move it from the container and stick it into this container here. If there's less than 100 liters in the source container, it won't move it, all right? But you need to pay attention to your output on your gas because when this fills up, it backs the system up and so on and so forth. All right, so that being said, let's get out of build mode for a second. And we'll go up to the office. And we talked about the hubs for all of the actual ores. So this is the hubs for all of the actual ores, one tier one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth, okay? They're all labeled, so they're very easy and quick to find. You can put them on screens if you want, but if when you can lean away from screens, do so because the more screens you have in a small area, they start to turn off, they start to do weird things, um, lag, who knows? But uh, just label items, it will be a lot easier in the future. Plus when you're linking, it will tell you you're linking from, in this case, chromite to whatever, and you'll be able to identify that. If you don't label it and you just use a screen, it's going to be part number blah, 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 or hub blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's just going to give you a big headache. All right, so we're going to come back out of the office here. And we're going to go to gases. Yes, we'll go upstairs to gases. Nope, we're not going to go upstairs to gases. My bad. We are going to go up. This is what we need to show you. Ha ha. See, not a good tutorial. Anyway, so this is what we're doing to monitor the gases at the moment. Uh, this is a script you can get on GitHub. Um, I don't know if it'll work after the patch when they take it out the HTML, but you can research all kinds of cool stuff on GitHub. Sorry, guys, I don't remember the name of it. But if you swing by the uh, building and want uh, a copy of the Lua, it's free. We'll copy it onto a board for you. And all I do is I simply deactivate this and reactivate it. The reason I do not have this on a detection zone is because if you queue this up too many times, it will go into like a system overload and a script shutdown. Uh, so if you have people walking in and out of here and it keeps turning this on and off, you're running into a problem. So put it on a switch. Check it when you have to. Okay, I've got a 58.1% on that container. It's good for a while. Uh, it starts getting a little high, depending on how much ore you're processing. Go down and empty it. Now you can either give it away, you can simply just uh, use shift and drag out whatever you want. You always want to leave a little bit in there because whatever you're processing, like I said, fuel, glass, blah, blah, blah. So that's the basics of the ore. And as far as the links from there, if we go back up through the factory, All of those pures will then either link to um, smelters, which are all downstairs on the wall. It's the same setup as the uh, refiners. And we, if we have multiple smelters, they all run into um, a single box. So let's go down here to where that all starts. And we'll just start and look at this box here. In this case, steel, stainless steel, and duralinium, if I pronounce that right. So what do we have in here? Steel products, stainless steel, and duralinium. Now, in this case, where you have multiple products in one box, you're not gonna wanna set your smelters to run infinitely because what happens is if you run out of steel product, for, for example, or you're not using as much duralinium and this just keeps producing, but this is constantly being used, you'll fill up this container and then you will have no room for these things and then your whole system will fail downstream. So just set your outputs on your smelters or any other things that you have to a set amount maintain if you are sharing a bin uh, on the output. Now, as far as all these go, uh, all of our smelters and whatnot simply come into these containers to start and the transfer units will then move them to container two as we need more links to container three, container four, and so on and so forth. If we go to build mode here, 
and we click six you can see all the different links here as they move as they fire out everywhere else some go up some go down all right if we hold control yeah well that's just a mess all right so we go upstairs here back up through this fun little door on the floor and the most common items that are used for the industry that is specific to yours um, is going to be different from what is specific to ours in most cases uh, so, for example, basic screws, probably pretty common, psyllium, durolinium, polycarbonate, then the list goes on. So, each one of these boxes, for example, this is the basic screw line. Now, what I typically will do here to save a headache is if I know that this is getting either close to 10 links, or I'll even do it right from the get-go, is I will come into this, I will type in transfer, I have some transfer units still in this bin, I will immediately put a transfer unit on this line and I will shoot a link to the transfer unit. Now the reason I do this is all of a sudden you're setting up a line, you need basic screws. You go to shoot the link, oh you've got 10 links and they all go to machines that are running. So what's the option? Well obviously you still need a transfer unit and you still need to set up another container here, name it set this to basic screws, have it transfer whatever amount you need to um, to keep all these running, but you need to break a link. So now you gotta go break a link, set this all up, go relink whatever you broke, hopefully you've named everything and you know where everything is, um, and then shoot your link. In this case, when you hit nine, you're like, oh, you've already linked to the transfer unit, you don't need to break a link and go find out where it goes in the factory. You just either have a box ready to go, or you simply set the box up, set the transfer unit, rock and roll, shoot this link to the machine, and when there's enough product here from the transfer unit, it will kick this machine on down here, providing all your other inputs have been met. So, as you can see here, these simply run across the ceiling. Um, I've done this in such a way that I can see when these are turning on. Uh, admittedly, I should have dropped these so they are facing down, but I can still see when they're on. So if I were to go up here, for example, and I was to pull out 500 screws, you're going to see this turn on, and then this turn on, and then this turn on, and so on and so forth, because it's like, oh, the maintained amount is not being upkept. So as it pulls 500 down the line, each successive transfer unit moving all the way back to where the screws are being made in this case all the way down here all right basic screws are going to turn on the machines and they're going to work to replenish that quantity that you've set it to maintain uh, so all these boxes stay fed now what you're going to want to do is let's get these screws back in here before i forget So these are already on, so it's already going to kick 200, in this case, to that last container. Is that going to matter in the bigger scheme of things in this factory? No. Um, it may matter in yours, depending on what you're running. You want to have enough screws, for example, in this case, to supply whatever you're planning on attaching to it. If you've got a unit that requires 625 screws per hit, and it takes an hour to run that unit, you know, maybe you can work with 2,000 screws in there. But you also want to make sure that you have 2,000 screws here, here, here. If you're running 2,000 down the line and you're only putting 500 in here, uh, this could stress this box. You know, because all of a sudden this box could technically run out sooner depending on the needs of this box. So try to maintain a consistency somewhat between your boxes. Um, so if something pulls more than another, you're not running into a, a shortage problem and gapping your industry. So I think that pretty much sums it up, guys. Um, you can organize your buildings any way you want. Um, you see how we have ours. You can come back here anytime you want. It's The door back here is in the back side of the Camara store. Uh, run around, take a look. Uh, I consider it a little disorganized. It's going to have to go through a revamp soon. But um, this is the setup, all the 3D printers here, all the electronics department. I do have some chemicals and glass here, and I also have chemicals and glass in the warp cell factory downstairs. 
uh, and they cross supply each other as well as bringing links from the warp cell factory up to this floor you know for uncommon leds as you can or i can in this case uncommon leds basic leds all right still it's coming up from the warp cell factory but again guys label your stuff so as you can see you can just look across the room and see what it is when you're shooting links um, because if you're already at this stage and this still says basic assembler on it um, you've created way more of a problem for yourself than you need take time go back relabel everything it is a chore but it is well worth it anyways guys if there's something else you want to know hit me up in discord obviously you know where to find me and uh we'll just go from there so have fun and i uh, look forward to seeing what y'all are creating goodbye